Hello, everyone. Welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max. I'm joined by my colleague, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Going well, Ryan. This is your Tesla Model 3, which people who watch this channel will be familiar with. And range anxiety is a topic that people always come up with. And the worry, whether it's a Tesla or any other car, is, oh, you know, the range that I'm predicted to have might not be enough. What if it changes? What if I'm left stranded? Well, at least in Tesla, Ryan, there's a very easy way uh, to avoid that for long trips. Yeah, it's super straightforward. Yeah, so basically it's the Tesla Trip Planner. In this video, Ryan and I are gonna show you how the Trip Planner works and what it is. To give a summary, basically this is just like maps built into the car, but crucially because you're telling the car where you're going, it's gonna give you an accurate estimate of where the battery will be, will be at when you arrive at a destination. This updates in real time on the fly, based off your driving, elevation, all these things are considered. So the system is honestly very smart. It's not always perfect, but Tesla is one of the better ones. And frankly, this is something I wish every EV had. Trip planning where they can predict, at least for a single stop destination, where you're gonna be at. And crucially, we'll show you how to do this. For a longer destination, Ryan, where do you stop at? Which chargers, how long for? What will be your estimated battery percentage when you arrive at each charger? Basically, wholesale trip planning that's actually useful and comprehensive. Something Tesla has, we've seen it in other cars, uh, like my Polestar 2 has it because it has an Android-based system with Google Maps, but every EV needs a system, if I can just preach that. Uh, but today, we're gonna show you how to do it on Tesla. I can't say this enough. Trip planning is so important in EVs. I wish every EV had one, but if you have a Tesla, then you have trip planning built in. And if you're remotely worried about range or making it on longer trips, you really need to consider using it. None of this, you know, my phone's on the vent or mounted somewhere and I'm using maps on it. Sure, if you like using Waze, if you like using those features, you can use your phone. But when you're using the car's built-in navigation, the car knows so much about what it needs for charging, preconditioning, the battery. This is what EVs are great at, in particular Teslas. And so I understand you may be used to your older car where the navigation that's built in is really crappy. And so as a result, you're used to using your phone. But with an EV, particularly with the one as software forward as Tesla, reverse your expectations. The EV knows everything about itself. And as a result, you really should rely on that system. I don't know, Ryan, I'm, I sound preachy about this, but I'm really trying to build in this habit to people of they have to use the navigation, right? Certainly, I, I definitely agree with you. It's, it's really important if you have actual trip planning and it can tell you uh, your battery state of charge when you arrive, it's really great to have that going all the time. Uh, it's just make sure that you'll be safe and uh, it's just the best way to go about doing it. Really is, especially on those longer trips. You don't need to use it around town because a car like this, I mean, at 39% battery, it's roughly right 100 miles of range. Maybe that's a little optimistic, but still we could get around just fine in Boulder and not worry too much. It's really when we are making those longer trips that planning is gonna come in crucial. So in Tesla, the navigation menu is this default thing on the right pane. It always lives there. If you're somewhere else like Spotify or you know another app, you can always just, you know, unselect that and go back to it, right? It lives here, Ryan? That's correct, yes. And then, you know, you've got this useful map, you can pan and zoom around, and we're gonna imagine a hypothetical long road trip scenario. So we're in Boulder, Colorado right now. Let's say we wanna go to like, I don't know, I wanted to go to Sedona in Arizona. That would be really neat. Um, maybe you wanna shop for some crystals. So <laughs> let's make sure we put in the right destination, make sure you have the right state, but sometimes I put uh, the wrong one by mistake. But yeah, the town of Sedona in Arizona. Let's go there. It's going to calculate a route. And the really cool thing here is it not only is going to get us there, it's going to tell us which superchargers, in the case of this Tesla, right, are we're going to stop at uh, to get there. And because it's Tesla and it's all integrated, uh, it's going to, you know, predict how long we'll actually take at each one. So, you know, we can see the turn by turn directions. We can see all the stops it made. Uh, we can zoom around and preview the route ahead of time. Uh, but basically, this is what it's going to be showing us. And Ryan, the important details here, as I understand it, would be, well, the next uh, estimated battery arrival at your next destination. That's right. And it can be found uh, just right here. And that is a dynamic number. So when you put in a destination, it'll tell you a percentage that it thinks it'll arrive at. But it won't necessarily just stay at that. For example, if you're driving really, really fast and aggressively, that, that number might drop because you're using more energy than expected. 
On the other hand, if you're very conservative with your accelerations, you could arrive with more state of charge and it will update in real time. So you'll have a very good picture of what's going on. Yes, it'll update in real time, but it keeps the navigation in mind. So if you're going up hills, unlike a system that guesses based only off instantaneous driving, it won't freak out because it knows you're gonna make up for it, hopefully downhill with regenerative braking, things like that in an electric car. So basically this always knows ahead of time what's happening, which helps it be more uh, more precise. And you're right, right, it may change, but typically, uh, you know, I think it doesn't change that much, assuming nothing out of the ordinary happens. It's very, very much better than just relying on, like, let's say this estimation, which is totally just, it's not even a guess, it's literally just uh, an extrapolation of a rated EPA range. And EPA range is, you know, what it is, it is a test, but real life is not a test. We have all kinds of different conditions. So this is much more applicable to the real world. May not be spot on, but it's honestly the best guess you're gonna get. That's right, and importantly, that number does take into account, like you mentioned, elevation, but also uh, temperature, wind, uh, all, all the types of weather conditions, uh, everything that you could imagine. It's pretty uh, sophisticated in how it predicts uh, your state of charge, and generally speaking, it tends to be pretty accurate. Yes, and because this is a multi-stop route, it knows, right, our next stop is the supercharger. As a result, let's say it's very hot or uh, very cold, the battery needs to condition itself to be at an optimal temperature for charging. The car takes care of that automatically, and that always takes a little bit of extra battery energy, but the car is going to let you know that. It's letting you know that with that factor in as well. The fact that, okay, let's say, for instance, it's really hot today, and I need to run the compressor extra hard to cool the battery down, it's taking that into account here. That's right, exactly. Before we leave this navigation screen, you gotta know that, right, your turn by turn directions are here. And as you scroll down, it's gonna show you basically the summary view of all the stops. So, right, our next supercharger stop is Conifer. If we leave right now, it's predicting, right, that 17% battery arrival. We'll get there at 3.32 p.m. and it'll be a 15 minute charge to get us to our next stop, which will be a supercharger in Poncha Springs, I guess, at 5.49 p.m. with 16% battery. So it's really like laid out our whole trip right in front of us. And I can't emphasize this enough, this is live. These predictions will change as you go over the course of your trip. Super useful. I like this sounds intuitive, but if you're not using this, you really need to be because it removes so much stress. If we want to add another stop, Brian, let's say, okay, yeah, that's great. I want to get there and it adds these supercharger stops. I want to also, while I'm there, stop somewhere in Golden on the way or something. How do I do that? So what you're going to do is go on this bottom screen and pull up and you can just go ahead and click the add stop button. Great. So let's say I want to add a stop. Uh, well, I mentioned somewhere in Golden. So let's just say we're stopping at, uh, what's the university in Golden? Uh, is School of Mines in Golden? Yeah, I think so. Let's say uh, I got a friend who's a student there, Colorado School of Mines, uh, or Mines Park. Let's just say that. It's a hypothetical. But it's going to add that in, and then, of course, it'll update everything else accordingly. It takes a little bit of time to calculate, but you can see we're going to get to Mines right now. We're at a pretty low state of charge at 30%. That still gets us to the supercharger decently. Uh, and of course, it's going to add to our trip time. So all of this is factored in here. And then we can also go into edit trip. And that'll let us like reorder our destinations um, as we add them in here. So that's just Tesla navigation, super useful. But Ryan, that's not the only picture of energy you can get. I understand there's kind of more of a summary view you can get of how you're consuming energy. Absolutely. It's a ton of really great data. And it's a lot of really interesting stuff. And it gives you a great breakdown of exactly how you're using your energy. And that is the energy app, which is this thing. It kind of looks like a stock ticker icon on your iPhone or something. It's a graph. It is the energy graph. So we hit this. And by the way, if you want to make it go away, hit it again, you'll go back to the map. But we want to be in here now. It's the energy tab. So useful. Okay, we got a graph here. What's going on? So this is a graph of your projected state of charge over the course of the planned route. So it's about, uh, it says 38.2 miles to get to uh, Mines Park. Uh, and this is the state of charge that uh, they predict to see. So down here, it looks like a pretty steep slope. So I'd expect that to be uphill, whereas right here, it's pretty flat. So I'd expect that to be uh, more downhill. Additionally, over here, we've got a bunch of information. So on the left side is the actual number of how much energy was used. For example, for driving, for keeping the climate control, battery conditioning, 
all that stuff. And then uh, once you do the drive, it will have a lot more information and it'll tell you whether or not it was accurate, whether it overestimated or underestimated. And you'll see that on the right side right here. Yep. So basically it's the uh, projection of it here. So driving, let's say we switch this instead of a mile view to what I'd argue is more useful, a percent view, 39%. It's gonna tell us on our trip how much percentage of the car's battery that has gone to driving, right? To climate, to battery conditioning, and all of that. And then it's gonna show the deviation here as a plus or minus whatever percent. Exactly. Then we've got range tips here. Right now, of course, this is blank. We haven't gotten anywhere at all. But if we went right now, right, and I was bucking it down like 93 or something and just burning electrons, it would say, for instance, drive slower. Or it might recommend setting a different climate control setting uh, to basically optimize your range in here. Exactly. And it'll say something along the lines of, you could have saved 2% if you stayed under 70 miles an hour on this drive. Or mm -hmm. you could have saved... 1% if you kept uh, AC at 72 degrees instead of 67. So it gives you a lot of really great information and details on exactly how much energy you're using for that kind of stuff. Yep, one more really important thing to note is that trip and rated are two distinct calculation models. I think the trip one, which we've just showed you, right, you're making a trip, is super relevant. Rated is just based off uh, the car's rated range, uh, where it is right now. And I don't think it's going to be as particularly useful, especially when you're combining this with navigation. You want to be in the trip mode. Exactly, yes. And then you've got park as well. This will basically just tell you the uh, static features in a Tesla, like sentry mode, using the screen, uh, which of those are consuming your energy right now. Exactly, yes. And right now we actually have this set so since last drive, since last charge. That's independent of the trip, but it's very useful um, as well on its own. Then, of course, we have an overall consumption graph. Uh, which is just rolling, I guess, from uh, an axis of 5 to 30 miles. Uh, and we can calculate that either instant or average over that span. Exactly, yeah. And uh, for me personally, I've always found the drive setting the most useful, and this graph in particular is very useful. If you're above it, that means that you're using less energy than predicted. It'll show up as green, and that means you're probably going to arrive with more, more energy than predicted. However, if you're going faster or using more energy than predicted, it'll turn orange and you'll arrive with less battery than you predict. And that's a great way for you to just stay on top of things and make sure everything's going smoothly as, uh, as you're going along your drive. Yep, the color is crucial. It's really nice to have the quick indication. If you ever played MPG games or other efficiency games and other hybrids or gas cars, it's a similar story here, right? Green is meaning you're trending upwards. Orange would be you're trending downwards and you may need to rein in your consumption. Uh, also, back to this here, Ryan, there's, I know, you know, this is obviously what most people will use. If you do want to get more into the intricate details of your consumption, watt hours a mile, what does that mean? Uh, it's how much energy is used to travel one mile distance. And a lot of cars actually use a slightly different calculation. They do my, uh, uh, miles per kilowatt hour. So uh, it's a slightly different calculation, but it's the same type of idea. It's just how efficient are you? Yep, gets across the same thing. And in this case of watt hours a mile, uh, you want lower watt hours a mile. That would mean higher efficiency. In the case of miles a kilowatt hour, you want that number to be higher. So there are different ways of expressing the same thing. If all that's confusing, but you do want to know more about those units, do check out a video I've done on Out of Spec Guide about units of efficiency in electric cars. But hopefully this has been a good summary of what to expect with a Tesla trip planner and using the energy graph in your Tesla. It's really in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits to owning a Tesla, and I'm sure, Ryan, you would agree. Absolutely. I've, I've been on several road trips, and I've, I've used the route planner pretty extensively. I found it's pretty accurate, and uh, definitely I've had instances where it was not uh, as accurate as I'd hope, and there were some weird behaviors, but for the most part, it's really solid. And even in those instances when it was inaccurate, it tells you exactly what's going on and it'll warn you. So it's it's not like you're gonna be surprised too much, hopefully. Yeah, crucial thing there. You're not surprised, right? You're gonna be updated in real time. So take your range anxiety, uh, your charging anxiety, throw it aside if you're in a Tesla, because this system is so well integrated and it works really well. And hopefully this was a good primer on how people should use it.